Okay, so there's just one loose end to the matter of pronouncing Middle English, um, and that's where the stress falls in words. Um, and my students certainly often really struggle to identify where stress is falling in modern English anyway. That, not when they're speaking, right? You just intuitively know where stress is falling, what the stressed syllables and the unstressed syllables are. In fact, intuitively, you know quite subtle gradations of stress as well. Um, but people struggle to kind of um, intellectually recognise where stress is. That's not something I'm going to try and deal with right now, but we will have to work on it at some point, you know, if you have trouble with that. Um, but um, the key thing for uh, understanding what Chaucer's doing and other Middle English poets is that the stress in uh, loan words, so words usually borrowed from French, sometimes Latin, the stress often falls in a different place from modern English. All I'm really doing here is just flagging up that this is a phenomenon and I'm not really expecting you to deal with it. Um, and if you think about modern English today, actually we're really quite confused about stress. Um, uh, sorry, confused about stress in words. If you see a long new word that you've never seen before, you won't actually be sure where to put the stress. And, and you might hear people um, uh, putting the stress in all sorts of weird places of kind of posh words. Uh, do you say... Um, Paragraph or paragraph, okay, so it's paragraph. Um, synecdoche or synecdoche or synecdoche, as I've heard. It's synecdoche, by the way. But you just, you know, you see a word like synecdoche and it's like, is it synecdoche, uh, synecdoche, uh, sy you know, s what is, is the, what, what's going on? Um, so stress is actually a real mess in English, and that's basically because we had a really straightforward system. Uh, that persisted into about, say, the 14th, early 14th century. Then loads of loan words were borrowed into English that had a stress pattern that didn't fit the local stress pattern, and it meant that our vocabulary suddenly had all these different ways of doing things. So you often have quite, quite a lot of variation. Uh, British English, we normally talk about doing research. Research. Go on, work out where. If you're a gangster, right, you know, where are you going to go, uh, for the stress syllable? Research. Yeah, you can't go, research research, right? But if you're American, you go research, research. Um, address, for your British English, address, American English. Garage, garage. Um, so, yeah, we've actually got quite a lot of confusion in modern English about where stress falls. Um, and that's apparent um, probably in Middle English too. Um, there are going to be lots of words in Middle English where we can't be sure where they were stressing them. Um, and different people were probably stressing them in different ways. You know, someone will have uh, the French style stress kind of that they've, they've still got. They might be saying hotel um, and other people will be saying hotel. Um, and we've wound up with hotel in modern English but we've wound up with hostel which is the same word etymologically. So hotel, hostel. Um, so there's going to be confusion and don't worry therefore about being confused. Just kind of seize the poetry and just work with it. You know, see what makes most sense. If you see a long vowel one of, something with one of those um, long vowel signs, that's going to be a stressed syllable, so that might help. If you see a word and you're like, ooh, looks like a French loan word, if you know some French or if you kind of, or, or some Latin, you're otherwise, or Spanish, if you're kind of attuned to that, uh, you might go, oh, okay, that's more likely to be pronounced on the last syllable. Um, words from Old English are more likely to be, be pronounced on the first syllable. But basically, just take whatever stress, you know, your language now gives to you, and if you like, oh, the rhyme has stopped working, then see about stressing somewhere else. Basically, don't give it too much thought. Don't let it interrupt your flow. Um, but be aware that, that the issue's out there, that uh, words might be stressed in different places then from now, or they might be stressed in different places in different parts of the English-speaking world now and also were then. OK, so that's how stress works. Um, yeah, that's pronunciation. Um, that's my quick guide to Middle English pronunciation. I really hope you find it uh, works for you. And um, I'm going to talk a bit about some grammar stuff in the next video.